Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. and we're here to do a show about Geeking My Kid. Um, it's a real fun show, and we like to share our touchstones of what brought us into geekdom, and then also what brought our kids, you know, and share have our sh- kids share what things that they're into and what they've enjoyed about being a geek. So without further ado, I am Kelly, and this is my daughter Ellie, and my friend Lilith. Um, and we podcast on Southgate Media Group. So, uh, come on up, Ellie. You can do the Geek Pledge. We have a Geek Pledge for every episode. So, <laughs> so you guys got to say it with me. So, you ready? I state your name. I, I state, state your name. name. <laughs> pledge to geek out and share all that is geeky. Pledge to geek out and ple- share all that is geeky. To embrace my dark side and feel its feels coursing through. To embrace my dork side and feel its feels coursing through me. To feel its feels coursing through me. In brightest day, in blackest night. In brightest day, in blackest night. My geekiness will shine most bright. My geekiness will shine most bright. I pledge this on Spielberg's beard. I pledge this on Spielberg's beard. And by Morgathal's hammer. Geronimo. Geronimo! Geronimo! Where's my Doctor Who people at? <laughs> <laughs> well, when we start with you, Lilith, what what made you become a geek? Um, let's see. I've been reading DC comic books since I was four years old. Uh, basically, since I learned how to read. Um, I'm into comic books because we moved around a lot when I was younger, and you know. There's different cliques in different schools, but you can always find that one group of kids that love comic books. That's universal. And it makes you feel more comfortable to be around that, you know what I mean? That's awesome. So uh, you had immediate friendships. Yeah, and then an immediate rivalry because, you know, Marvel. (laughs) Those kids like Marvel. (laughs) Which is nothing wrong. I read Marvel too, but DC is just that, that pull for me. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. You know, the original three of Marvel, it's like, the Human Torch, Submariner, and Captain whoever. Marvel? <laughs> yeah, and Captain America. It's just like, at least they have a chick in DC. <laughs> what about you, Kelly? Um, well, my first, well, probably my first geek memory is watching Super Friends, Justice League, um, oh goodness, all the, the cartoons, you know, as a kid in the 70s. On my little black and white Philco TV with the dial, you know, I was poor kid. Hey. So, <laughs> you know, I had I have those memories. It was really neat to be able to see, you know, some some of the artwork here from from those childhood memories. It was really really something to see. Um, and then also, I had a wonderful brother in law who took me to my very first movie, which was. Star Wars in the theater, and I will never forget the the Imperial Bell cl- cruiser goes across the screen, and my jaw just going, <laughs> you know, at eight, just watching this in this little theater on the on the circle in my hometown, you know, tiny little place, and it was just like I was transported a million miles away, and I've been hooked ever since. 
How about you, Ellie? I always remember watching Star Trek Next Generation. She would put it on the TV, and I would just drop what I was doing and just start watching it because I loved it. And my favorite character was always Data, and I loved that he had a cat named Spot. I just loved that for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> what other What other shows do you remember that you got into or that we watched together that were kind of geek-driven? I remember Star Trek, and I just remember Star Trek and Star Wars was the ones that I would always remember. I mean, that's a movie, but, you know. I kind of remember sharing Knight Rider with you. Oh, yes. We would watch Knight Rider, and I just loved, like to watch the thing go back and forth on the car. <laughs> how about how about books? What? I mean, uh, they're... Uh, uh, my cousin got the first two Harry Potter books for me. For Christmas, and I was like, you know what? I don't really seem like I'll be into this, and I just left them for a little while. And a year later, I'm like, you know what? I'm finally gonna read them. And I started reading them, and those copies of the books look like they've been through everything right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> did you intentionally like try to get her into it, or you know what I mean? Like, are you a first generation geek? Because I'm a first generation geek in my family. Everybody yeah. can't believe that I'm like the way I am. Yeah, I definitely am a first generation geek. I think I started watching Star Trek when I was about six. My mom would teach art classes at night. She would have students. My dad worked third shift, so he wasn't there. So, hey, eight o'clock, Captain Kirk's on. <laughs> you know, I'm eating my TV dinner in front of what, watching Captain Kirk. So I, I started early. And my sister couldn't understand any of it. She's my sister's a lot older than me, so thirteen years older than me. So I was the only kid, and it was just me. So yeah, she's come by it honestly. She got stuck with two geeks for parents. So I was genetic. Yeah, I was. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, first generation. I mean, I've come to find out like when the first Fantastic Four movie came out. Um, my uncle goes, he was like written and raving about it. I was like, what? You you know about that? He's like, whose comic books do you think you stole out of your grandma's attic? And I was like, I don't know. She's a hoarder. I don't know where she gets this stuff. <laughs> and so like, at, when I was older, I was like probably like 16, 17 when that movie came out. And so I was like, I've been hiding my geekiness this whole time. We could have been talking instead of watching that stupid Chicago Bears and Detroit Lions Thanksgiving <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> And then my aunt also watched X Files. She got me into X Files, but I, that, that's like the gateway for like TV geekdom, I would say, not mm. necessarily like normal geekdom. Normal geekdom. Okay, okay. I I recently found out I had a conversation with my dad. My dad is eighty, and um, you know, asked him about. Did you read any comics when you were a kid? What you know. I know that TV wasn't invented back then, but, uh, you know, what what kinds of things did you, you know, did you enjoy? And he was telling me about, oh, yeah, you go buy a comic book, it was 10 cents, and, you know, I get Batman or whatever, and then I had Superman and stuff, and then we'd trade, you know, my friends. If it had a cover on it, it was worth two comic books without a cover, you know, and we'd trade, and I'm like, do you have any of your comic books when you were a kid? No, no. Oh, Dad, that kills me. Um, <laughs> you know, no, we we pitch them or whatever. We couldn't keep them that long, you know. But uh, I read them, and I was just really surprised because, it, well, and it makes sense though because my dad's an engineer, you know. So he was also kind of into the more creative stuff as well, which really surprised me. Knowing his personality, and you know, he's kind of a well, he's had a stroke. He's kind of a gruff old guy, but to to find out, you know, here we have something in common, common that I never would have guessed. Did he ever listen to the radio serials? And she, no TV literally wasn't invented. Like my grandmother, like she knows John Wesley Shipp, uh, you know, the guy that plays the original Flash from the 1990s. But he was also a soap opera star, and so now we can share that later in life. But she she started off with I think it was Young and the Restless when it was on the radio. Oh my! <laughs> Do you, oh. Like she's my grandmother. Right <laughs> and so she followed it to TV, and so like now that we can share that, I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. like, There's certain actors that just span so many different things. Yeah, I don't know if he listened to any of those. They as had a kid. Superman Rick Ray and all yeah. that stuff back I listened to like the Lone Ranger and that kind of stuff when I was a kid you know so well, I know I'm old but anyway um, <laughs> you know but it was just kind of a cultural thing because I know my dad watched 
those shows a long time ago, and they were repeated on, well, what's now is our Fox affiliate, but back when I was a kid, they were just an independent station that had on whatever they could have. They had, at first, they started out with a movie library, a huge movie library, and then they branched out into, you know, they had Batman 66, they had... Um, the Munsters, they had Green Acres, they had, you know, all these classic shows that, you know, The Lone Ranger, I, I was introduced to all these shows as a kid, and, well, heck, I wouldn't have known if they were black and white or color anyway, because I had a black and white TV, but, <laughs> you know, it was just really neat, because they were all things that they were familiar with, and I, that we could talk about. How about you, Ellie? Well... Any of your other relatives or, or people that you've... Well, I know I'll randomly start talking to my cousins and stuff, and I'll mention something, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, I know that, and we'll just start really getting really excited about it. And it's really awesome. Like, some of my friends will, like, Vocaloid, they'll, like, video games, and we'll just talk for over hours just about one single thing. So... You know, you you have some interests in some things that we can't get in our local area. Like, I know you like Vocaloid, and you like, um, like, Doctor Who and stuff. And it, while it's there's more of that here now, you know, in everywhere than there used to be, what's it like for you to come somewhere like this where you can find all this stuff in one place? It's awesome. I will literally go around and just start fangirling. Like, I will hyperventilate sometimes <laughs> because I'm a big otaku, like a anime lover, and I can't find almost anything. I'll go to Hot Topic, and there'll be some stuff. But coming here, it's just like candy wonderland <laughs> everywhere. I'm just like, oh. I think you did hyperventilate yesterday she over booths of plushies. Yeah. <laughs> There was like, and the Vital Pop figures. It's huge. I love Funko Pops. I collect them. And when I find ones about animes, I just start freaking out. And they have these little figurines that are really high detailed. And they're really hard to find. They're they imported. And they were amazing. So what kind of geeks do we have in the audience today? I saw a Doctor Who fan. Let's see. Comic book fans. Marvel or DC. I won't judge. <laughs> We'd love to hear what your touchstone moments were in becoming a geek. Well, I wasn't sure I would actually consider myself a geek, but Hazer... It's not a dirty word. It's, no, it's, it's a, a dirty great thing. thing. Well, I'm, I'm an art teacher, um, so I definitely appreciate um, looking at all the artists' work, um, but I'm not like a comic book um, reader um, or... Um, but I've gotten her into things that I didn't think she would, like... Like Arrow and Flash and Game of Thrones and I love the TV show. Yeah, a lot of, yeah. So do we. Yeah. <laughs> we so podcast about them. Has helped me get her more into the you know geek culture a lot. Well, and I'm yeah. trying to um, bring my uh, students, my art club, to the St. Louis Comic Con. So one of the reasons I'm here is to kind of see what this is all about, to kind of know what to introduce them to when we come. And I I really. Um, like hearing what you're into because that Thank helps you. me figure out what I should um, concentrate on with my students. A lot of my students are in the anime as well. Come on up. We have well afterwards. We have tons of pictures. We can show you <laughs> what, what they're into. <laughs> we have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and my son is huge into Marvel. Yeah, it makes sense. The movies are huge. And yeah, Superman specifically, DC, and I hate Superman. Superman, everything. That's my Superman's always been my thing. So I kind of, I think genetically passed it on to him. But I feel like it's a lot of Hulk, Iron Man. They're just, they're just more. They're more vibrant. I'll give you that. And today yeah. they're more age appropriate because DC after the Fifty Two reboot, I personally, if well, I had kids, wouldn't give it to them. Now they're just more of it, like Hulk and Aiden's Smash. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think they're just, they're just more Marvel stuff for kids. I think a lot of that's because they were owned by Disney now, so they're, they're really geared Merch. Towards, towards, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So it's geared more towards kids. And that's where, like, when we saw this, like, okay, what's what's the appropriate age to have the kids watching what? Because I don't want, you know, my son literally hulks out on people. He'll, he'll be <laughs> mad and be like, yeah, yeah we're like, should we have shown them the 
notice yeah, that. Sure. <laughs> with, with a panel like this, we're thinking, okay, I want to introduce my son to like Back to the Future because that's my all time favorite, but I'm like, he's mm -hmm. too young to understand it. And with Star Wars, I, you know, I don't want to introduce him to the prequel trilogy first because that's just right. blasphemy to me, <laughs> personally. Because, you know, because they get all, they use the CGI, and then when they see the Jim Henson, you know, they're like, what the hell happened to that? <laughs> it reverts. So, I mean, there's, it's just where, you know, they're, they're little now, and we want to start introducing what's, what's the, the, the right path. Well, I can tell you that I was eight when I saw Star Wars and absolutely fell in love with it. And no nightmares, no, you know, free, I understood it. Now, did I need to watch it about five times to, to totally get everything? Oh, yeah. But I did. I wore out the VCR tape of, you know, <laughs> Star Wars and all, all the whole trilogy over time. But, yeah, I mean, it is hard as a parent to kind of figure out what is age appropriate. And with her, I started, you know, probably Star Trek at probably six, you know, um, because there really isn't a lot of violence per se in Star Trek. And it's a lot of, I wanted to feel like I could introduce her to science and technology and wanted to do that earlier because we live in that world. We really do. And if science and technology isn't scary, if, if you can see it building a better world, then you're going to embrace it. <laughs> Except for the Borg. Yeah, we didn't go Borg until she was quite a bit older. She didn't see anything Borg for a long time. Still creeps me out. <laughs> do you have any anime fans in the house? Ah, mm -hmm. Like, what kind of anime do you like? Um, I, I'm not super into it. I know I have a couple friends that are really, really into it. But I like stuff like, I know yesterday I cosplayed as the character from Naruto. Oh, yeah. Um, Attack on Titan. She, she's sort she's of, geeking out. Sort of online. <laughs> I made her watch it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she did. So about the fellas in the back, what are you into? What are the kids into these days? Now, are you an artist too? Do you like to draw them as well? Yeah. I think that's what a lot of like people that are in anime they're artists, artists because you know it's a, it's really good in figure studies and stuff like that. It's very mm -hmm. detailed. I remember my cousin. Um, I went back through my memories a little while ago. I always remember her watching anime on the TV. She was watching Pokemon and I think Yu Gi Oh, and she might have been watching Naruto too. And I didn't actually know what it was. I thought it was really cool. But I've been getting back into it lately. I really wanted to get into it at the time. I just had no idea what it was. So. And yeah, there's some great art books out there too for teaching oh, yeah. drawing anime. I actually got her some for Christmas. So there's some fantastic books with character studies and everything in there. Anybody else on the sides want to share? We're more of a Star Wars household. Oh, all right. right. Three year old and a six month old. Very cool. Well, that's just a huge universe, too. Well, do you count? I know some people don't count the expanded universe, so don't. <laughs> I'm original trilogy only. I would brawl her in and get her hooked on it and then introduce the uh, more adult series. Yeah. Well, I mean, they even have Lego cartoons. Yeah. That's right. We can't see. She's wearing. She's currently wearing the Millennium Falcon skirt. So, yeah, we're Star Wars family, too. So. What about you, ladies? When you look back into this, like, oh my gosh, they were so not politically correct when they first started. <laughs> yeah. Um, which now, yesterday, her two little girls and my three youngest girls came here specifically to meet Tommy. Jason David Frank, mm -hmm. absolutely. And my four year old was so fan girl. She's so hard to get her picture with him because she's always like, oh my god, you're so freaking girl. And then my youngest one, she just turns two, and I'm already geeking her out because I brought her to Awesome Con six months ago. And she was in the Supernatural panel where 
Mark Shepard and Sebastian Boucher actually interacted with her. Everybody's like, she is so young, she's not going to understand how awesome that experience is. But that's going to live on YouTube in infamy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, but then I also had a situation where I was in my room, and my six-year-old, I just looked up, and she's laying on my bed, staring at the screen, watching Dr. Who with me. And my children already know that if I have the board out on the table and the dice are set up, oh, it's game night. Low D&D or? Pathfinder D&D and Star Wars um, D20. So they know if the dice are out, stay out of the kitchen, it's game night. <laughs> <laughs> Smart kids. Anybody else in the tabletop games? That, that's a throwback, really retro. It made a resurgence about like six years ago. Actually, we even have a podcast about it. <laughs> yep, yeah, my niece and nephew just went to the tabletop store the other night and were playing games and bought another one. So, yeah. Two, actually. Yeah, there you go. See? Now, that, that to me, that's like Dungeons & Dragons is like the epitome of the geekhood. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, my childhood, too. <laughs> it's so intricate and complex, and you every way you play it, it's different, and it's strategy, and it you know builds critical thinking. And I think, like, being a geek, some people think that's a bad thing. I don't. Not at all. I think it's cool, like, because a lot of geeks make the world go round. That's right. Well, we geeks are engineers, artists, musicians. I mean, literally, if if there weren't geeks, you... would be in the Stone Age. Though. Exactly. It'd be a very, very boring world. Uh, I, love, I love to get to go to conventions because you meet some of the most amazing people that are into so many things. And I find myself coming to these conventions and hearing about new things. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to check that out. What am I going to, you know, we were actually listening to a podcast on the way here. And I'm like, ooh, that sounds like an interesting book series. I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to look that up and see, see what it's about. So I think it's neat that we can by our, our geekdom and by our the things that we enjoy, inspire others to to expand their horizons too. I mean, I wouldn't have nearly as much fun in life if I wasn't a geek. I wouldn't. We got any uh, gamers in the house? Little Minecraft, little War- World of Warcraft, just me? Okay. Steam. <laughs> you got your Steam account? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Dude, friend me. Her, 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 her uncle bought her... A bunch of games. Bunch of games on Steam. I think for like that. That's like just definitely new millennium kind of geekitude. And, you know, YouTube. YouTube kind of built on that. And I think YouTube is like a really big community full of really cool geeks doing really cool things. Any YouTubers? No. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the other podcasters. Oh, we got podcasters, bloggers. That's definitely geekish again. <laughs> awesome. What do you do? I'm starting, it's a, my own version of Nerdist. Very cool. I'm a stand-up comedian, and all my buddies are stand-up comedians, and I realized that we all kind of grew up the same way, where it was like, maybe a little, you know, ostracized by the cool kids because we were into things that other people weren't into, so, you know, and that's kind of where our comedy came from, so a lot of we're into comic books and movies and a lot of literature and, you know, things like that, so I'm kind of getting... Everybody scheduled out. It's like, hey, why? Everyone, my, my hook, everyone has that one thing that they nerd out about. And it can be like from wrestling to fantasy football to, you know, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Everyone has one thing. It could be bowling. Who knows? You know? But everybody, everyone <laughs> At least one geek, thing. They geek out about something. Right now, my two year old's geeking out about Disney in general. You know, it doesn't have to be a quote unquote nerd or geek thing. You know, it can just be something they're really passionate about. Right. And um, so that's kind of, it's, it's kind of exploring people's passions and what makes them into why they're into it and what, how that helped them develop as a, you know, productive, hopefully, member of society. So. I think we geeks are some of the most well-educated people. Even I mean, if it's not in the traditional Exactly, sense. exactly. Curiosity Be- fuels knowledge, definitely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, who would have thought that, okay, you know, I'm going to, because I love this ring that's on the Flash, I'm thinking about going out and using a 3D printer and printing it and then actually casting my own, you know. I wouldn't... It's out there. I saw it. Did you find one? There's a Green Lantern power ring, and then I saw the Flash. Yeah. You'll have to tell me where you found that. I don't remember. We were, it was next door. She got her earrings. 
So, okay, yeah. you'll have to tell us afterwards because <laughs> we're definitely looking for those. On the creative side, like I see so many amazing cosplayers who have made their own costumes, and it just blows me away because mm -hmm. these hands, not even a sewing machine, can help. <laughs> <laughs> individuality and creativity and just conforming to the social norms um, and I that bothers me <laughs> they're losing their sense of wonder yeah you know it's, it's very much a robotic society we know they're stuck on their phones and in social media and there, it's a lot of a lot of sheep well it doesn't have to be that way with social media or just technology in general it's just about how parents teach their kids when to use it, how to use it. You definitely have to set limits. I mean, I know my godchildren, like, every Christmas they want, ooh, give me the new iPhone. And I'm like, okay, let me ask your mother first. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> but, you know, you have the parental apps, and they get mad at you, but it's for their own good, you know, go outside, go play, or read a book <laughs> after you're done, you know? Yeah, do something, you know, whether it be, you know, sew, paint, draw, whatever, but you can't be on the phone or on the tablet or on the computer 100% of the time because it's just not healthy. But the whole conformity thing I totally get because, you know, even even we adults face that in the workplace. You know, if you want to maybe wear your hair a little different or, you know, be unique, a lot of times that's really frowned on, and Which it's it sad. Be. This isn't an IBM culture anymore. That's right. Of the, of the black pants and the white shirt and the little blue tie. Like, it's just, that's just too rigid. Your, it just doesn't work. Your personality and your passion and, and your uh, individuality should be an asset. You know, that should be what they want. And so, yeah, I, I really hope that we, we as a geekdom can kind of revolutionize that because... That's where I'm from. <laughs> I'm I'm from a town that's probably well, goodness. Um, well, there were 700 kids in my high school. There was about 140 in my graduating class. So that's big. Uh, <laughs> that's but that's that's not my town. That's actually 20 minutes from me where I was bused to. Uh -huh. I live on a lake. There is literally a <laughs> convenience store. And a post office and a barber shop, and that's the town. Yeah, so I totally get that. And it's hard because they, you know, when you're in a really rural area, it's hard to be a geek because you don't see all this cool stuff, it's not readily available to you. I think that geek geekdom has grown, though, because yeah. even though I'm only, like, 28, I remember there... And I, I've grown up in big, major cities, but it was always, like, just a few comic book shops or just a few little trinkets here and there. And now, like, every time I go to, like, LA or something, it's just, like, oodles and noodles and Barnes and Nobles even sells it. And it's just, like, it's a good thing, but I kind of miss that sense of the small mom-and-pop comic book shop and you kind of just thumb through and... You know, you got to give and take with the times. I really do miss that. There's there's not a comic book shop in the town that's 15 minutes from me. I have to drive, well, I could go 30 minutes and get one little comic book shop, or I can drive an hour and get several. Uh, my favorite one is actually the one where Blake Neely's dad shops. Blake Neely does the music for Arrow and the Flash, and his dad shops at one in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and that's where I go a lot of times, so... But thank goodness for the internet when it comes to geek That's shows. right. Yes. That's where the sense of community is now, but I just wish it wasn't so much trolling, I guess. That's yeah, the only that's one true. thing. That's you true. That's true. Anonymity. You gotta love we, Etsy. We actually podcast together, but live nowhere near each other. So, I mean, these cons are, are times that we finally get to get together. Yeah, we met on Twitter. Like, yes. that's crazy. Like, I, I, I would have never said, like, mate, like back in 2011 when I joined Twitter, yeah, I'm going to meet somebody off of Twitter. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually met probably 30 people that have been my friends on Twitter. I actually roomed with three of them from France at Comic-Con in San Diego in 2011. So it, you, it's wild things happen. Who would have thought we would have gotten interviews from Twitter? I know. <laughs> 
So, and we have several. <laughs> so it's it, the electronic world is really bringing geeks together, and it's amazing how accessible celebrities, fans, uh, people that created things that, you know, um, one of the gals who designs her universe, the, all the fashions that you see, a lot of the, like the Star Wars and the Doctor Who stuff in Hot Topic and all these places, she's online and she is the most friendly person, you know, and she's an artist and she creates all these things. And it's just so wonderful to see all these people interacting with people who love their stuff and, you know, that we can be that interactive with those people. But, you know, my favorite part of the online fandom is fanfic. <laughs> yes. It's fanfic writers. Come on. I know there's some. You don't want to talk about it? You don't want to talk about it? I, hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that is crazy. Like, I do, I, I really love transformative fiction. Um, just because, yeah, well, I, I love Supernatural, and they give you literally, a you know, like, side stories for everything you could ever want for fanfic, but... I, I love the writers. They do it for free. They do it because they love it. And, you know, yeah, you got to eat. And I love the writers and everything. But, like, the fans are more in touch with what the actual fandom wants. And so you can just read a thousand pages. And you're just like, oh, yeah, that hit the feels. <laughs> well, it's amazing, too, because, for example, um, we were talking about the other day Beauty and the Beast. You know, it's just been renewed for an, a new season before the third season is even aired, which is and that was Pretty the power cool. of the fans and, you know, some financial stuff. But definitely the fans loved that show, kept it in the social media. People were writing articles about it. But the lady that wrote the novels is actually a fan, a fan and a fan fiction writer. So thank you very much. Um, so, you know, here she is. She was just a fan fiction writer doing it for free. And now she's got books that sold out in a day. And I will say Everywhere. the last time that that happened, it was Fifty Shades of Grey. It's much better than Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> But, you know, how amazing is it that we geeks can go from doing stuff we love as a passion for free to being paid for it and selling out overnight? I mean, it's just incredible that the power of the Internet and the power of people banding together of all ages, really, for something that they love and embrace. So any questions about podcasting or anything else before we go? Well, you can find us on Southgate Media. We have um, Southgate Alter. Media Group has, yeah, what? 60. I think it's at 60 because we just picked up a couple at the last time. New podcasts. So we have podcasts for everything and sometimes multiples of everything. Yeah, we literally have a podcast about Pinterest. We have one for Star Wars. We have three for The Flash, two for Arrow, two for Gotham. Yep. Oh, gosh. We have uh, one about anime. Mm-hmm. That's Ramen Radio, right? Yep. So yeah, it's literally something for everybody. And of course, geek my kids. <laughs> so, um, but Lilith and I co-host. Um, we do Queen Consolidated and Flashpoint, which are Arrow and Flash podcasts. And I also co-host Before the Bat, which is a Gotham podcast. And, and I do Channel Fifty Two, and I do uh, Constantine. Which one is it? It's uh, the Newcastle Crew with our fearless leader, the founder of the group, co-founder of the group, uh, Rob Southgate. It's awesome. We have fun. It's like really smart though, and it's also like the most important thing to us is like that it's kid friendly. You can listen to your the podcast around your kids because it's completely clean. And uh, it's kind of neat too because Rob's daughter Molly is also a podcaster. She's already done her hundredth episode. So yeah, she, she does, they do cuckoo for uh, cuckoo who with for her who? and uh, ever after, and she's so adorable. And you can hear her on the last episode of Geek My Kids before. Yep, this the um, live in Elgin episode. So. She definitely has some opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know. Like, you get, get your kids into geek, geeky too, geeky stuff, and anything can happen. <laughs> One day they can be famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Good> internet famous. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. And it looks like the next panel has arrived. So thank you for joining us, and we hope you check out uh, southgatemediagroup.com. Bye.